Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is King Mo, and I am Mong. Now, most of you don't know what Mong is, like most of the country, because Mong is, the Hmong people are relatively new to the U.S. I want to start by talking about this man, Chiu Jir Dong. He is a Hmong motivational speaker. He travels around the country teaching his audiences about Hmong, Hmong culture. He immigrated to the United States in in uh, 1980, after being born in Laos in 1973. Despite the differences between Laos and Laos, <coughs> he graduated high school as a valedictorian. Now, whenever he was in high school, uh, one of his teachers asked him <coughs> what his mom, and he didn't know how to respond to that. So today, I'm going to teach you about what mom really is. The mom culture is very unique, and to learn about it, one, we need to know about the Hmong history, Hmong lifestyle, and Hmong culture in present day. So I'm going to start off with the Hmong history. Uh, the Hmong people were first identified in 2000 BC in southern China. It wasn't until the 19th century, in 1810, that the Hmong people moved into northern Laos and lived in mountains. In the 1950s, the French, after the World War II, the French took over Laos and controlled uh, much of the land there. The Mo they imposed taxes on the people and the Hmong people revolted and it led to a mass slaughter of the Hmong people. In the 1960s, the Hmong, in the Vietnam War, the Hmong people helped the, Amer the U.S. soldiers by giving them intel about the land in Vietnam because U.S. soldiers didn't know much about the land there. After the U U.S. left Vietnam, the Hmong people were left to bend for themselves as the Laotians and British sought revenge on them. So this is a painting, or not a painting, but a cloth that Hmong people sold, and it shows the story of the Hmong people. Uh, this is the Mekong River, and uh, the Hmong people had to escape from Laos to go to Thailand to take refuge where it was safe. Over about 200,000 Hmong people migrated to Thailand, and then in 1976, the first wave of Hmong refugees came to the U.S. Now, this is General Bang Pao, and he is uh, widely known as the Hmong leader. He helped; he was the one that helped uh, the CIA in fighting the, in the Vietnam War, and he passed away three years ago in 2011. I just told you about the Hmong history, and I'm now going to tell you about the Hmong lifestyle. This is a typical Hmong house in Laos and Thailand. It is made out of straw and made over just dirt. Uh, whenever the Hmong people were relocated, they would have to abandon this house and build a new one. In Hmong culture, there are 18 clans or last names, and here's the list of them. Uh, I'm, I'm a Mua. And then in Hmong marriage, you're not allowed to marry anyone with the same last name as yours. So like for instance, my dad is a Moa and my mom is a Bane. But then my grandma, my dad's grandma, my dad's mom was Ellie. And this is typical Hmong pose that you would see if you were to go to Thailand. And on your right here is the best of Hmong pose that people would wear to Hmong events, such as the Hmong New Year or Hmong soccer tournaments. Uh, Hmong weddings is really different from American weddings. It is a two-day event, and in Hmong weddings, the groom side is, has to pay three to five thousand dollars to the bride's parents. And this is not for them to use, but for them to hold. Because if there was about uh, to be a divorce, then if it was the bride's fault, then the money would have to be returned back to the groom's parents. But then if it's the groom's fault for the divorce, then the bride's parents get to keep most of the money. And uh, although all Hmong people hold uh, traditional Hmong weddings, some may follow it with a uh, traditional American wedding too. And this is a picture of what they do at a Hmong wedding. Uh, they tie these white strings onto your 
risk to which you fill up and get up. Now I just told you about the Hmong lifestyle and now I'm going to tell you about Hmong culture in present day. Now the Hmong culture, uh, most people believe is a dying culture because uh, coming here to America, people have adapted, adopted the ways of the American ways and don't really know much about the Hmong culture. Uh, less and less children are learning how to speak Hmong. Uh, English is usually their first language now. Although some kids may understand Hmong, they may not be able to speak it. As I know my, my little brother, he, he can understand Hmong, but he can't speak Hmong. Because growing up, we only talked to English to him, or mostly English to him. And children don't really know about the Hmong history anymore. Uh, in today's time, we still hold different Hmong events, such as the Hmong New Year in November. And North Carolina has probably one of the top Hmong population in the country, too, aside from California and Minnesota. The Hmong New Year is usually a three-day event where people set up tents and sell food, sell clothes, or Hmong movies and stuff. And it's just like a big cultural gathering for people. Uh, here we also have monthly Hmong soccer tournaments where they have soccer tournaments, volleyball tournaments, and flag football tournaments, and they compete for money. And then we also have religious gatherings where uh, we do spiritual uh, rituals and stuff. Now I just told you about the Hmong history, the Hmong lifestyle, and the Hmong culture in present day. Now. I'm gonna go back to Tutor Tutor's story where he was asked what is mom? So what is mom? When he asked his mom what mom is, his mom said mom is I. Although it, it may sound funny, it's actually true because the mom culture lives in each and every mom person and it is up to the mom people to teach the younger generations about mom culture so that it can live on. That's all.